All right, now that we have a cluster, let's take a look at our cluster quorum settings. Now, the cluster, cluster quorum settings, you have to have a majority of the nodes or witnesses online in order for the cluster to function. And your cluster quorum settings define how that is calculated. That is initially set when you create the cluster. So the way we look at it is we right click here on our cluster and we go to more actions and configure cluster quorum settings. And right here on this before you begin is going to tell us a little bit about it. The quorum configuration affects the availability of the cluster. You have to have a significant number of cluster elements online or the cluster loses quorums and stops running. A um, couple of other notes there. <clears throat> So, when you create the cluster, the cluster software automatically chooses a quorum configuration. Now, you may want to change that, and that's what this is about. So, we click Next. Now, the default configuration was determined by the initial cluster configuration. When you built a cluster, it looked at the nodes that were available, and it determined this is what we think cluster configuration should be. You can come in here and change that by selecting quorum witnesses or setting advanced um, quorum configuration. We're going to do the advanced quorum configuration just because it's going to take us through everything. We won't actually change anything. We'll come back and look at the other one here in a minute. So I'm going to click Next. All right, so this is Assign and Remove Node Votes. So basically, by default, every device in your network gets a vote or every device in your uh, cluster, every node in your cluster gets a vote as to whether the quorum is up. And if that device is online, it votes yes, which is that one that we saw on a previous video when we were looking at our cluster settings. In fact, let me cancel it and take you out there real quick. So, cluster, and we were looking at nodes right here. This one has an assigned vote. It's going to be one or zero. One, yes, you can vote. Zero, no, you can't. And the current vote, one is yes, keep it up. Zero is no, take it down. Um, by the way, that's always set to one if the system is active and operational. If this server was to go down, well, I'd have to have more than one for you to see it. But if the server went down, then that current vote would go to zero. So, back to our quorum settings. Um, so, we're going to go to the, back to the advanced one. So, this server was assigned to vote. And I can select specific nodes that are allowed to uh, vote to keep the cluster up. The default is to do all of them. And normally, that's going to be just fine. There may be some rare instances where you don't want specific devices to have a vote as to whether the cluster stays up or not. Now, in addition to that, we can also have a witness. And a witness is something that's actually used on a fairly regular basis. So let me give you an example here. Let's say that I have a cluster, a failover cluster of two devices. So I have a primary server and a backup server that are doing this particular role. And I have the two clustered. Well, what happens is you have to have more than half of the cluster online in order for the cluster to stay up. So if I have two devices and one of them fails, then let's say my primary one fails, then the cluster does not have more than 50% of his devices up, so the cluster goes offline. And at this point, you're thinking, well, that didn't help because I put the cluster in there to be a failover in case the primary device failed. And you're right, that doesn't actually help at all. That's what this is about. This is a witness. And so the witness is a device that votes in the cluster, but is not actually a node in the cluster. And we have three different types of witnesses, a disk witness, a file share witness, and a cloud witness. So a disk witness, we would have a specific disk. I'm going to click next here so you can see this. We'd have a specific disk assigned to the cluster that this cluster would use as a witness. And if that is online, then it's going to vote to keep the cluster up. So now if I have two nodes and a witness, and the first node fails, the second node and the witness continue to vote to keep the cluster up, so the cluster keeps functioning. I can do a 
dedicated disk witness, I can do a file share witness. So I can set a file share somewhere else, preferably on a third server, and say if you can reach that file share, that's going to witness for the step. It works the same way. If I don't have a dedicated disk that I can associate with this, or if I don't have a file share on another server that I can use to witness this, I can configure a cloud witness. And so that's going to be through something like Azure, where if you can reach this particular cloud site, this particular cloud service, then go ahead and keep it up. So those are the three different types of witnesses we can add, and that really comes into play when we have a cluster of two devices. If you've got three devices in your cluster, then it's not as big of an issue. But if you've got two, then having that quorum witness becomes really, really beneficial. All right. So let me come back previously. So we have, whoops, let me actually go one step farther. Let me, I'm not going to configure a quorum witness at the moment. And then we view our uh, settings. We click next and it goes through and reconfigures it. Now I didn't actually make any changes there. So that's not a big deal. It didn't change anything. But um, I'm going to go ahead and click finish. But that's how you would go through and set your quorum configuration. And remember, you can you have to have at least 50% of the quorum votes, well, more than 50%, so at least 51% of your quorum votes active in order to keep the quorum or in order to keep the cluster online. And you can use either nodes or a single witness. You don't do multiple witnesses, you do a single witness, and it's just enough to get you over that 50% if one of your devices goes down. All right, so that is configuring your cluster quorum settings. Now, the last thing to do, and by the way, just to be aware, we can do cluster shared storage here, and I don't have anything here that will let me do that at the moment because I don't have the devices, so we'll have to address that later. Um, I can also create cluster shared storage um, that will be normally on a SAN or on a um, high-speed iSCSI configuration, something, some type of storage that can be cluster shared, and that would fall here under disks, and then everybody in the cluster can use that storage. Um, so that's something that you'll frequently want to configure. Then the last thing, we'll have to address that at a later date, and then the last thing is to configure a cluster role. And we're going to do that in our next video.